This bag will be used if it's going to take me longer than about 24 hours to get home or if I'm underdressed for the weather because what you're going to find is mostly in this is additional clothing and then additional shelter items if I got to spend the night out. So let's start off with the first thing on the outside. There is SOS emergency ration bars. That's basically 3,600 calories of food. It doesn't taste the greatest, but it's small and compact. There's also a tarp that can be used as a, to make up a shelter. And that is all that is in that compartment. So as you can see, I've got additional food because, you know, all I had in the other one was protein bars because I'm going to get home that same day. But if I got to stay out overnight, I'm going to need some additional calories. I'm probably going to need an additional shelter. Now, attached to the bottom of the bag, using Canadian jam knots, I've got a Thermarest CCF foam pad that I can use as ground insulation. One thing I forgot, I also have paste beads on the outside of this bag. On this bag though, it's in the wrong place. This GPS should also be on this other bag. So I would have the GPS as a way to get me home using a line of sight instead of roadways if I had to. But it should have been on that other bag. I had it out checking to make sure the batteries were good and getting them recharged. So the only thing that's on the outside of this bag is the foam pad. Everything else is on the inside. I'll go ahead and go over what's in the top next. It has a toboggan. I almost always have a beanie and lightweight glove with my Marmot puffy jacket in the winter time. But if you're walking a lot, that beanie is going to get wet from sweat so I wanted a dry one to have to change into if I have to spend the night somewhere. I don't want to wear anything wet. I also have a compass. This is a K and R in this bag and the other bags in the other bag is a Suanto. I have a small partial roll of one inch duct tape that could be used to make a super shelter if I needed to um, to go along with the tarp because it is winter time a super shelter is way warmer than just an open tarp. I also have a Ranger Grip 58 knife to serve as a knife in addition to the bushcraft knife that's in the glove box or the multi-tool that's in the other bag. I also have a spoon I can use to eat with if I need to and I have another 50 foot of night eyes rope which weighs two or three ounces I think. Way lighter than paracord and also way stronger by the way. So that's all that's in the top part. If you kind of notice there's a theme going on here that this bag is going to be used if I'm walking farther or the weather is colder or I got to stay out longer. Now in the main compartment of this bag you're going to find I'm continuing on with that same theme. There is a plastic bag and inside the plastic bag which is not compressed if I was going to have to add the other bag to this bag I have to compress this more or put the clothes on or something to that effect. I'll go over what's in this plastic bag in a minute. In the divider of this bag, I have 
an SOL escape bivy that can be used as a layer of insulation or as a shelter by itself. I also have a piece of tie back which can be used as a ground cover if I have to set up a camp. And I have a large Fresno lens if I needed to make fire from the sun. So that's all that's on the inside. Now let's go over what the contents of in here is. I keep this inside a trash bag because I know from long distance hiking this works to keep whatever is in here dry. And I want it to stay dry because this is the clothing I'm going to wear if I have to spend the night and my clothing gets wet from rain or sweat. You never want to sleep in wet clothing. So first thing out of, out of the hatch. This is made by cold proof. This is a platinum two double insulated uh, base layer shirt, long sleeve made out of merino wool. I have the matching bottoms also made by cold proof, the platinum two series, double insulated merino wool. I have two pairs, a lightweight and a midweight pair of wool socks. Two pairs. What if it takes me two days to get home instead of one? What if it takes me three days? I have what are called glow mitts. They're very thick, heavy wool mittens that can be made fingerless. They're in fingerless mode now. If I want to make them into a mitten, you pull them up and stuff the partial fingers in there. Now you have mittens. If you want to go back to more like a glove, fingerless glove, you just fold them back down again. But they're merino wool. They're super warm. I also have another pair of merino wool glove liners. These can be put on under the mittens for even more insulation on your fingers. I have a merino wool balaclava. I also have down in here to use as a sleeping bag on top of all that warm clothing. This is a Helicontex Swagman roll that can be used as a sleeping bag, mul multiple other purposes that can be used as a wooly liner for the military poncho. And then one final thing that's in here. I have a 9 by 12 2 mil plastic drop cloth that can be used to turn my tarp into a super shelter, which is way warmer than an open tarp for a shelter in the wintertime. So that's what's in this other bag. And again, all this clothing can be compressed down enough to fit the whole entire other bag that I already showed you will all fit inside there. Or I can take the contents out and stick them in there. Either way. Now, let me put all this stuff back in here. To round out what I keep in the vehicles is the military shovel. Now, this isn't something I'm going to want to carry with me. But I keep it in the vehicle in case I slide off the road or get stuck in the snow or something to that effect. I can quickly pull this out. I keep it in the trunk, both the car and the truck. Just like that. Tighten it up. Now I got a little shovel I can dig out with. 
In a really extreme case, I could attach this to the pack by the Molly webbing, and I could use it somewhere out making a shelter for digging, say, a uh, Dakota fire hole. And because this little shovel turns into a, ho a hoe, you can very quickly dig in just most any soil. And these are military tested. This one is actually uh, has the NSN numbers on it. The one that's in my car is actually made by Ames. I've got the ones, you know, all of these are actual real issue military shovels. They all have the NSN numbers, the correct markings, and everything. Don't buy a cheap military shovel. I have bought them advertised as military shovels. They were not made by Ames. They were not made by Gerber. They were not made by anybody that ever had um, a contract with the government. And they're just flimsy and cheap Chinese crap. Make sure you get a legitimate military shovel if you're going to carry one of these in your vehicle.